Hey everyone, welcome back to Unsealed and Revealed. <laughs> <There he is. laughs> hey. Oh, everything was going so well. Anyway. <laughs> as I was saying, as I was saying, welcome to Unsealed and Revealed. It's the web series from Sideshow in which we feature for you some of the latest and greatest offerings from the six scale galaxy. In this case, today we will be featuring a character who made the transition successfully from animated to live action, but also a character who has transitioned dramatically from her role as a terrorist to the leader of her people, and then on to a freedom fighter. I am, of course, talking about Bo Katan Kreese and the Hot Toys figure of that character. It's an amazing looking figure. I can't wait to see what Guy is able to do with this. Speaking of Guy out there with me in California, let me introduce you all, especially those of you who are tuning in for the first time to my compatriots out there in California, Guy Clinton and Jesse Cohen. Hey guys, how's it going there? Hey, it's hey. going great. Hello, hello. <laughs> going great for some of you, those of you who haven't tripped and fallen over your own mute button. I <laughs> know, uh, you oh. did it on purpose, Terry. You were just yeah. keeping us on our toes and we appreciate I'm, that. I'm glad to know you guys caught on so quickly. Yeah, um, yeah. Be oh, before yeah. we dive into this figure, Jesse, do you have some housekeeping that you need to take care of for us? I do. There's there's quite a bit, so I'm going to get through it pretty quick for you guys this morning. So 
first and foremost, thank you so much for being here with us on this Tuesday at Unsealed and Revealed. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification button so you can stay up to date on all the cool stuff that we have going on here. Now, another great way to stay up to date is our newsletter, sci.show slash newsletter. It has a bunch of fun information, latest and greatest in collectible news, all that good stuff. Now, you, of course, are in Geeksgiving, which means it's us celebrating you. Make sure you are registered over at side.show slash Geeksgiving so you can get your $10 in Sideshow rewards. We also have a ton of deals going on for everybody, side.show slash deals. That'll bring you to our daily deals. We also have BOGO deals, which are crazy good right now. We're all talking about them, side.show slash BOGO. And um, that's our buy one, get one half off. They are some really, really awesome deals that I can't wait to dive into. Um, another cool thing we have going on right now, of course, is our wish list and uh, wish list giveaways. So you want to head over to side.show slash wish list 2022. Make sure that is updated with all of the in stock items you would wish that you had. So um, yeah, that's it for me. I want to get in on this figure. Thank you guys so much. Uh, can't wait to see what you're going to do with this guy. Definitely, definitely. BTM. Thanks for that, Jesse. Um, yeah, Guy, I'm hey. really, speaking of guys, hey, Producer Alan, welcome hey, to the I'm, show. I, I am one of the guys. So, uh, hey, just wanted to remind everybody, we are planning our holiday episode of Unsealed and Revealed. I think it'll be our last show of the year. I'm not sure yet. Uh, setting everybody's expectations. Not sure exactly what we're doing this year, but I know for fact you're going to want to have a sideshow wish list, which means you have to have a sideshow account. Once you have your sideshow account, create a wish list. You're going to want that wish list anyway because you're going to want to show your family and friends, hey, this is what I'm looking for. We fill out my collection. Should they be in stock items? I would think they should be in stock. Yes, in stock. Uh, the show is on December 15th. Last week, I think it said December 13th. That was wrong. We changed that. Collector Claus had a conflict. So it's December 15th. You're going to email unsealed at sideshow.com, subject line, Dear Collector Claus. And then I will be watching December 15th, and my wish list is public. Now, if you've already emailed us and you said I'll be watching December 13th, we know. You don't have to re email. Us. We already know you're already in on Collector Clause's good list. So that's what you have to do. Um, we may or may not be picking wish list items for people. And we may or may not be giving away Terry and Guy's picks for the year. Where it's all, we're all, we're working on it right now. So we've got a team of elves on it. Lots of elves. Alan and Jesse Elves. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's the rules. Um, so all hype thank you everybody for watching, and let's get started. All right. So yeah, Terry, okay. let's. Without any further ado, yeah, go for it, man. I'm going to take take you off the chain, guy. Let's Show dive in. Um, for those who are let's. collecting the line of Star Wars figures by Hot Toys, particularly Mandalorian, we've seen that the cigar band that's down on the bottom is in this warm yellowish orange, almost desert like tone. Uh, to it, and this continues with this. Wraps around with two different uh, possible poses and bits of accessory. And there on the front is going to be a photo of the helmet free portrait that we are going to have inside as well. Uh, they have done this in a shoebox design, and when you take it up, I call it the tissue paper photo. Um, and that is because for me, it's always just that one extra element before I get to the stuff inside. And we have her in an incredible action pose. Now, I've already gone and unpacked all of this, and we are ready to go with this. If you want to see how the trays are laid out or anything else specific about that, uh, make sure to check out on our Sideshow channel. Uh, we do have a first look on this, and that'll dive a little bit deeper into how the trays are laid out and such. But now, on this show, uh, yeah, they work in tandem. You get to ask all the questions. So... Let's start. We're going to go with uh, some close-ups and work our way down. First up is that helmet. Terry, mm -hmm. I love this helmet. Um, and yeah. I know that this is one uh, that, that you are a big fan of. Um, 
And so I want to ask you a little bit, because you were talking about the history of this character mm -hmm. and such. Was this the first time that we saw a helmet like this that's a little bit different than the other traditional, I'll call T-shaped, Mandalorian helmets, where it does have that bit that kind of drops down uh, toward the nose? This was kind of the first we saw it. Correct? Yeah, it's, it's very much a modified version of that classic Crusader Knight look that we see with the with the traditional Mandalorian helmet. And I, I as far as I can, as far as my knowledge can attest, then yeah, this is the first time when we were introduced to Bo-Katan and the Night Owls in Clone Wars, that's the first time that we saw this look. And they transitioned it pretty much bit by bit, the, the, entire, the entirety of the armor and the look of the character directly to live action, which is really cool because that means that you can successfully pose this figure with your Clone Wars Hot Toys figures, as well as the Mandalorian Hot Toys figures. And I dig that option. I, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I do think that's really neat, whether or not you're going with the Clone Wars that have more of a photo reel that we've seen in the Hot Toys figures or directly from the screen uh, actor-wise. And they've nailed it. They've, they've nailed the portrait and all. We're, right now we're talking about the helmet and we're gonna zip back into that and take a look uh, yes. at it. That paint job is spectacular. The weathering on that, uh, I like that that uh, owl, that you see that eye and beak mm -hmm. on the front. Uh, they've got kind of that stippling effect to uh, give it that dirt. Um, we know that as you said, she's evolved from terrorist into leader and everything else, which means she's seen a lot of action and they've definitely done that in the, in the helmet. And just look at the depth, uh, just look at the depth of the paint on that helmet. And of course, all throughout the armor, we're not sticking with a single layer of paint. We're getting multiple layers. Uh, so there's like almost like a gradient of blues that's, uh, that just is showcased throughout that helmet. And then also leads down into the gray, the gunmetal gray bits on the armor. Uh, they, this was not a one and done sort of paint job. It's really, really spectacular. Exactly. We're going to stay in close up because of that detail you talked about right there on the shoulder pauldron. Okay. Again, the, that heavy duty weathering uh, and that logo, but take a look at underneath that stitching. This is mm. some of the tightest stitching and this is a really tight fitting suit. Uh, when we saw Boba Fett in his it was kind of a, uh, a, you know, a lighter gray, almost uh, loose jumpsuit and Bo-Katan's is a very, very tailored. Uh, and that stitch work that's there on the arm in the cross uh, hatch pattern style on the elbow, uh, the ones on the side, as well as these in the leather, and then on the undersuit there, uh, exactly. scaling it's down. It's almost unprecedented in the, in, the degree of a, in the degree of complexity that's gone into all this stitching. I can think of very few figures that, in which we see that. Yeah, um, we're gonna zoom in again, bam. Okay, there we're gonna see that armor and all of those edges do have that great weathering effect. Okay, I get, you know, I don't, Terry, I'm sure you and I could spend about an hour and a half deciding how many layers of paint they've applied to, to get this look, but we know it's <laughs> oh, quite I, I a have. It, We know it is quite a few. Working our way down from the chest, we get onto her ammo belt. Now this is done in the faux leather. Those are permanently uh, closed. Don't go trying uh, to uh, lift them up uh, and move them uh, from where they are. They are uh, positioned fully. However, as we spin it to the back, you will see if you need to do any slight uh, repositioning of it, it is held onto the waist by Velcro. So you will be able to do that. I'm gonna lift the arms up out of the way. If you're hearing that uh, other than my voice, you're hearing the ratchet of the arms to keep those in place, uh, which is great. Yes, strongly ratcheted joints, yeah. Uh, yeah, really neat. We get down on to the holsters the two side arm holsters, okay? They are independent, so they'll be able to move. We've got the armor underneath working our way down. Again, more of that tight stitching uh, that we talked about. Uh, that is, that's to me is what is really, really impressive. And I, I wonder if, if the Bo-Katan character, maybe it wasn't talked about in the show necessarily, but if she kind of tailored her own uh, giving it this, uh, this look, because this doesn't look like it was a standard issue. Uh, we it's then... unique to my knowledge, Guy, and, I, and I also in addition, I wanna bring up the fact that they did use multiple materials on that. Mm -hmm. the, the combination of soft goods, the fabric and the, and the faux leather materials is, yes. uh, is really well done. Yeah, right there, uh, kind of connecting that chest plate or uh, there on the front 
of the knees, we get that hint of leather. Uh, we're going to jump back to the close-up again to go to our last point. Yeah, that's all the way down to the feet. Uh, we're going to see the armor around there. Again, nicely weathered, the dirt kind of in the crevices. Great paint job on that. Now, the armor that is on the shoulders, as well as on the front here and all, is all held on by Velcro. Uh, Terry, I know that's something you and I actually prefer uh, because it gives us the ability to kind of move it out of the way if we need to and then place it when we've got our portrait or what our pose. I said portrait because, wow, there it is. Boom. I'm going to turn that light off. First of the accessories, but it is the swap out portrait. Uh, we're going to let uh, Michael go and get some nice close up on that. Now, this one here, Terry uh, brought it up in that this is right off, right off the animated into the live, and there there was no change uh, in the styling of it, and that was pretty no. darn unique, from the way that headband is to the way the hair is. The strands there on the hair, the blue headband, those little hints, so you can see the, yep, little hints of the red there on her headband, which I don't know, was the headband a communication device or something like that, or just really, really fashionable? I don't know that that's ever been addressed, but I would like to point out that, and fans of Katie Sackhoff will notice that they even went so far as to give her those two characteristic freckles on either side of her cheeks. Boom. Uh, yeah, that that's, uh, that's some serious yep. attention to detail there that would have been very easy to leave off and they, they put it right there. Yes, uh, the skin tone on it is beautiful. Uh, you know, you got to bring it up before I did, but they've done beautiful skin tone, nice bright eyes and an intensity to her and a softness of the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, the, 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 this, this warrior is all business and she does that frequently, looking out slightly from beneath her brows just to mm -hmm. make sure that people see that game face, that business face when she's addressing them. Yes. And uh, the yeah. intensity there is on point. Now, because we've got that in close-up, we're going to stay there. Because um, one other thing, this goes into accessories, but continues with the outfit. We talked about the tight stitching throughout the outfit. Um, on her gloves, on the index, as well as the little finger, also have a stitching done in it. If you look at the way the glove is done. Nice. Right down the index and there, and that is on all of them. Just another little detail of the way in which the outfit is made that they go and replicate it. You're seeing those bright, shiny parts. Yes, that's right. She's going to have that flight pack. And these are going to fit right up in there. They have a translucent quality with a warmer down to the bright white at the end. That's a, that, those are a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. they play really well with the light in yep. any display. And these are, uh, if you have other other figures with the flight stands and all, these are new and unique. You'll see that they have a slightly tighter taper uh, to the blast effect. Uh, I have a feeling that Terry will be uh, having me use those when we get to poses. We're going to stay in that <laughs> close-up, go right back to it, because um, I've got Michael there. And <clears throat> if we talked about the first look, and uh, you will hear Terry tell you what type of blaster that is, and we're going to say it here again. Terry, what type of blaster does that she have? That is the <laughs> Westar 35 blaster pistol. All right, and she has oh, two Terry, of these things. That's become one of my favorite things about the show, is learning these blasters with Terry. Learn it, learning it. learning Thank blasters. You, Terry. Uh, Terry and I have always kind of found it fun to know the different ones. If we zoom as oh, close yeah. in on that as we can, you're going to even see the handle has beautiful wood grain. Um, yes, it does. Again, wow. these are these are not you know fresh from the store, and she's out. You see a little hint of grime there on the underside. Multiple colors of metallics, again with hints of the blue that work well with uh, her outfit. There you can see that wood grain again uh, with me casting a hint of shadow over it. Now, a couple of others. Now we did have the different hands. I, sh I wanted to show you the stitching. We're going to have fists. We're going to have pistol holding hands. And we also have this one here with a slight open grip. And that is for, What's that for? Uh, you know, Terry. This is, this is what gets <laughs> me. It's those little accessories. Yep. She has a comm link. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Everybody she loves a classic. She does come with a little comm link. Something made out of an uh, aerator for a sink. Two model parts, and I forget what the other uh, white plastic part is, but uh, I'm sure somebody in the chats is going to tell me about it. But the fact that she comes with one of these 
uh, is spectacular and a hand just to be able to hold it. Now, mm -hmm. we did see she has those blasters. She does have two other weapons to use on that right gauntlet. Please follow these instructions that are included. Yes. Uh, that are going to tell you how to do it. That you have her blade right here. Okay, that will go onto that right gauntlet. It's a tension held there on the back. So be careful when you're removing it and placing it on there. And this is a hard molded plastic. So again, uh, when you're putting it on there or doing the poses, make sure you're choosing the correct hand to use it uh, when you are doing your pose. And the other one, I don't know why I always like doing it this way, Terry, but I always like showing these things going. Zip. <laughs> it just I don't know why I do, but right. I just do. Uh, that's my quirk uh, for that. I'm sure I have a lot of on, the, on this show. Uh, but it is that grappling, and it's going to be done with a hard wire, okay? And that'll just tuck under the gauntlet again. Follow those instructions. They'll tell you to remove the hand and place that under. Now, um, right back to the figure real quick, because there's uh, something we did not go over in our design. We talked about the blast elements, but can we get a close-up there on that pack? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, right. Boom. Uh, great, great weathering on this. Um, what I like when they've done the packs and stuff like that is if you were to look at probably the front end of airplanes and things like that, that's where the paint gets tinked. Uh, and, and such as it's going through, that's where everything, and so it all has that coming down. You're getting that, that kind of the soot uh, type deal down there. You are getting the, the most weathering is gonna be at the point that's getting hit first, working our way down. I think that's pretty darn neat that they did it. The next accessory is our dynamic stand. Boom, dynamic flight stand. This is going to screw into the base. If you choose to just want the base and you don't want the dynamic stand, and there is reason you may want to do that, you can do that. It just undoes here. And the reason I bring that up is it has an accessory for the stand. And that is going to be the guardrail. Nice. Boom. Now I've it's, said it. It really does it. round it out nicely. It, it right? Exactly. Now mm -hmm. I've set it yeah. behind there. Um, and as you will follow those instructions you have the option of doing it one of two ways. Either in the back, which is why I thought perhaps you might go, hmm, I don't need her in a flight, I want her standing there, I want the rail behind her. You'll be able to take that off, boom, and you've got it to go. But we're gonna quickly show that if you wanted it in the front, that front name badge with the chrome name plate can be removed and I can place it in the front. Perhaps I want her flying up and over the side railing. We'll see what Terry has me pose. Uh, but that's there. You have a translucent effect on the two red uh, lights up on the top as well. And then uh, one last accessory that there will fit go. into any case. Oh, and that nice. is going to be a backdrop to go behind your Now between base. the backdrop and that railing, it actually does successfully provide you with that uh, the setting for the from the exterior of that Imperial cruiser mm -hmm. when Bo Gatan and her team were invading that Imperial cruiser headed up by uh, commanded by I can't remember the character's name but by act, but he was played by actor Titus Welliver um, and that's a fantastic scene in which she uses that switchblade that stiletto blade on her wrist to very great effect so it's very memorable I'm kind of glad that they gave us that option you know that's uh, I like that Hot Toys does a couple different things little specific things like Com links. Um, but even when this is done in, this will allow you to be very scene specific. They'll go mm -hmm. scene specific, but also give you enough things to make it yes. be an overall. If you're like, right. yeah, but I don't want it from just that moment. They're not doing the few seconds of it. All right. Now up to how can this character move? All right. And that's going to let Terry tell us how we're going to pose. Uh, first up, our articulation point on a Mandalorian helmet is... Range finder drops down to 90 degrees straight there in front. All right, we've got a ball jointed head there, which is going to allow us to spin that around. Mm -hmm. Lean side to side, tilt forward, tilt upward. Terry mentioned it there, and you can probably hear it. I'm going to stay quiet. 
incredibly strong ratchet. Directly out to the side, straight up front to that 90 degree. Straight back to that 90 degree. Now, that, that, what happened just there, Guy, when you were moving that, mm -hmm. I just feel the need to bring it up that yeah. every single element of that armor is detachable and can come off with, uh, with Velcro. Um, yes. So it's, yeah, you can, yeah, that's, it's very comforting to have that option. I think, I think what I like is, and I may do this if I was posing it there at home, is remove all of those, do my pose, and then lay them on there. So I don't feel quite as restricted, and I can get it in the spot yes. I want it for most realism. Next up is going to be the Gunslinger 90 degree flip flip on each side. <laughs> All right. Nice. I like that she's got to get a little Gunslinger. Um, we're going to have a traditional wrist point that's going to allow us to spin fully and flex there. With the arms up to the side, we can take a look at our chest articulation and we can do our Terry trunk twisting. Call that side to side. She can lean side to side. And we do have some armor, so most of our forward bend would come from the uh, the hip. It's all in the hips, right, Terry? It's all in the hips. Right. That's what the, that's what the, that's what I, that's what I, that's what grief, that's what grief cargo says. Yes. Yeah. That's what, that's what, that's what I, yeah. It's all in the hips. Um, <laughs> there, our leg can go out to a 45. Yes, we're doing 45s and 90s uh, today on the show. Mm -hmm. We can kick our legs straight out. Nice. Backward. Our knee is a 90 degree bend. Boot is going to be independent. The spat made of faux leather covering it and that armor on the front allows us to flex, extend, rock side to side as well as turn and then allows us one last feature. It's time for tread watch. Boom. <laughs> tread. <laughs> tread. Uh, and as you can see, it does have that Velcro strap holding the spat in place. Okay. Uh, the only thing we have not shown on this, and it may be part of our posing, uh, is if you choose to remove the helmet underneath, see if I can move it back that you can see it, it does have a flesh-colored neck peg that will allow us to put the unhelmeted portrait on there. Fantastic. I have a feeling that Terry is going to go for a little bit more dramatic uh, oh, pose so much. Uh, today oh, yeah. with the flight stand and such. Uh, so I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have to remove that quite yet. But we are at that point where Terry, please tell me what pose we're doing today. Well, guy, you're going to need a flight stand. Oh, I do <laughs> happen to have one of those right here. Yeah, and you're going to and you're going to need a couple of pistol gripping hands. Pew, pew. And I'm going to need pistol gripping hands. Spectacular. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to already put the pistols in hand. And if I am correct, sir, as you are our aficionado on these particular blasters, there is not one that's right and one that's left. These are identical blasters. Yes. And I'm going to put them in each hand, correct? Not, not holstering? Uh, yeah, exactly. So. All right. Not holstering. No. All right. As not I do today. that, why don't you stand up and tell me the rest? I'm all Flight over. Like stand. I'm wondering if you're going to uh, leap. Can we get Terry full screen, please? Okay, just making sure there he you is. See, I can't see the top of my head, but okay, that's fine. That's all right. You're going to be flying up and out of frame. Just, uh, just, uh, just really quick, I'm just doing an audio check. Yes. Can you hear me okay? We can okay, hear so you. Hopefully you can do. hear us. I'm just going to give this to you bit by bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, this one leg bent up to that 45 degrees and then just cock that down to the 90 that we saw that it can do. All right. Okay. I, this is very helpful, sir. I like that we are able to do it. Bit by bit. And I'm going to point that toe downward, correct? Okay, yeah, exactly so. You'll All you'll right. Point the toe down on the great leg as well. Gra okay, and on the other. Okay, fantastic. Okay. And the other thing, that you, the next thing that you're going to want to do, once you've got that dialed, is to do a torso twist to the right. Got it. And then you're going to want to bend it down just a little bit, just to like give her a crunch slightly to the side and slightly forward. Slight crunch. I like following. I kind of like following the line. The crunch should follow the line of the legs. All righty. Okay. Then you'll want to tilt that head down so that she's looking down at it as well. Okay. And then the blasters should both be out front and kind of firing 
like she's like she's flying away from something but firing kind of in this direction so let me just give you all right i'm going to straight arm i'm going to utilize that butterfly joint that we have up at the front am i okay. because i'm looking at how you have your arms so let's have you walk yep. to the screen and take a look i'm going to give you multiple angles that is currently straight out in front but I could rotate the arm if need be or get a slight bend in it if you wanted them to be closer together by using that cut bicep. Are they going to be snug together or straight out in front? I'm thinking straight out in front because what I'm trying to what I'm looking for here guy is her flying up her, her flying up while at the same time blasting downward at an enemy who's who's still below her that she's left in the dirt all right now um now there, there's very there's different degrees that you can do this downward firing thing you can choose to do it like straight down or just any modification between straight down and and straight in front of her all right for um our speed up purposes on this i'm going to quickly put her on here because this is where we're talking our twists our turns and that slight modification, Terry, that you are talking about. Now that I have her in an elevated and we'll, we'll move that around when need be, I want you to take a look at it so we can talk okay, so about the arm, here's the what we're motion do. of the head. Here's what we're gonna do. I don't have a flight stand with me right here, but what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna have, wanna have her leaning back. We're not gonna wanna have her going straight up. So we're gonna wanna have her flying slightly backwards. Like she's in a retreating posture but shooting down at whoever it is that she's retreating from. Got it. Yeah. We've seen her do that to great effect uh, in the final episode of the second season. All right. It's really dramatic and it's really fun. It's one of my favorite looks. So Terry, in order to kind of do that, um, and I know you've done some great how to be a poser videos on how to use these flight stands. In order to do that and keep the balance, I bent forward and then leaned exactly it backward, so. keeping, keeping that exactly weight over the, the center of the base. How is that for a uh, quick one that's a good start what i would do just to like just to, just to do the thing that i like to do which is to hit every joint possible mm -hmm. every point of articulation possible take that straight leg and lift it just a few degrees don't give it the full the full 45 degrees but maybe halfway all right there i've done that okay. with a hint and a hint of bend at the knee as well and if you could do just a bit of crunch and lean her forward instead of having the things go back there we go, because that was just a little too much. And I think we've got it. Go ahead and put the put the gun hands in. I think I'm going to make a quick modification and have you bend that um, left arm 90 degrees, or 90, yeah, 90 degrees, while, ex while keeping that right arm straight after you get the pistols in there. All and right. I think that pose is done. Okay, so the right arm straight. While he's doing that, Jesse, do we have any questions from the uh, viewing audience about the figure? We do. I'm seeing two specifically that keep coming up. Now, um, I wanted to know if it might be possible if there could be a head swap at some point so folks could see the head swap because we have a lot of questions about, about that. So that was the first one. Um, also, we have a few questions regarding how easily those blasters are to get into her hands. I can so, answer that one about the blasters myself. That okay. grips are very, very tight, but of course the, the the fingers on the hands are pliable enough to allow you to do that. Again, nice. it's very, very snug. You don't have to worry about them falling out. So that's the plus. That's that's the okay. plus side for that. But it does take a little bit of effort to get them into the grips. There's always that that threshold that you try not to cross. I think when you're when you're when you're sculpting these hands to fit the particular blasters, and I, I'm always glad when it kind of errs on the side of too snug as opposed to too loose. Yes. So, I get um, that. so yeah. yeah, I agree. And while I wouldn't say that they're too snug, I would say that they are a perfect fit. I completely um, agree. If people were uh, seeing that, uh, okay, he's wiggling those in a little bit harder. Um, I do <laughs> like the snug fit. Sometimes with something like that, um, I'll use a little warm water or kind of warm it in my hand a little bit uh, first to allow the hand to open up a little bit. That's one method, but I always use a, I always use a hair dryer on a low setting. It's, yes. uh, it, it works remarkably well okay. and just happens like that. You just soften the plastic enough to make it more pliable. Now, Terry, let's take a look at those question. pistols. I have taken yeah. and put the arms uh, using that butterfly joint about as far forward as I'm able, keeping the mm -hmm. right arm in straight. The left arm, I've given a bit of bend and a turn in the bicep to get both guns kind of yep. going along the same parallel line so talk i think to you've nailed it i do notice that you are missing one element though what's that oh i know what you mean 
Yeah. <laughs> I knew yeah, you, knew. you know, we are flying. We better better get that mm -hmm. flight stuff going. All right. So I'm I will. Uh, song. I'm flying. I will. And then, you. yes, as to the other question, Jesse, I think that we can. I think that as soon as he gets that nailed and we have him walk away so that we see the look of that figure uh, against that awesome. I love that backdrop that they chose today. That, it has, know, a, that has a very, very great mood to it. And in fact, I wish that I had it here. I wish that I had that file so that I could use it myself for uh, for some figure photography, because that's really, really oh, good. Absolutely. Now, um, yeah, a lot of people are asking that one with with the head swap. I see it, some people that are excited to do the pose with, you know, her head sculpt holding the helmet. So mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of excitement. So yeah, Terry, you guys. Um, so you uh, have her going kind of up before she goes over the rail. Fwing. Yes, exactly so. All right, are you yeah. pleased with this and uh I am going to move out. I think it's leaning I think it's I think it's leaning from my view it's leaning a little too far to the right. I would have her a little bit more upright um in, in the flight. It's it almost looks uh, yeah, there we go. It almost looked like she was out of control there, but th that little tweak you just did was just enough to make it look right. And those tweaks can okay. happen from flight stand or other, but I am going to step out. Um we have a background that is projected but um after i will drop that uh included backdrop uh, as well so you take a look at that one yeah such a powerful scene and i'm i'm glad that they chose to go with her her first live action appearance on the show which just even though i knew that it was coming at some point i was just just to see bo katan make that transition on screen and to have actor katie sackoff who of course voiced the character in the clone wars also make that transition to live action was just like mm, a chef's kiss yeah, great that was casting really special. Yeah. Uh, yeah yeah terry i came in just yeah. real quick again because i'm gonna drop the figure down show that you do right. have now of course we've taken and had her all the way up at the top of that stand but i could easily lower that just using my screwdriver right. drop it down and you'd be able to have her a little bit lower that she's just kind of straight blasting off Guy, I'm just going to go ahead and suggest that we go ahead and move on to the helmetless pose. So Boom. let's go ahead and keep this uh, keep this moving along and make that happen. Um, helmetless pose? Again. Non-flight? Yeah. I think that we can swap out the the left hand or the right hand, your choice. Okay. Um, leave the blaster in the hand that you don't that you don't pull and use the relaxed grip hand on the on the hand that you did pull. And then we'll pop that helmet off and we'll just have her holding that helmet under the arm. All right, let's see. What do we want to okay. do? Eh, she's going to be a right-hander. Oh, there was part of me that on the right hand kind of wanted to have her holding it, but pulling it out of the holster. Okay. I don't know what your thoughts on that are. Let's yeah, see I, I don't, I, again, I think that it's irrelevant. If, if folks at home, if whichever side you choose, that's purely discretionary. That's just your choice. And of course, that, that, your display is probably going to dictate which side that you go with having her hold the helmet on. Um, yeah. And we're just going to do this. Very, we're going to keep this very simple guy. We're just going to basically do a museum pose with her here. Just get that helmet on the arm and get the head on to replace it. And then it'll pretty much be done. All right. Thank you guys so much for doing this one. I know a lot of people wanted to, wanted to see this swap out. So thank All you. Right, it's a reasonable so, request because it is a brilliant yeah. portrait and it really deserves to be highlighted. I um, when I, when I opened the one that I have here, I was, I was immediately struck with how real it looks. Um, and I've, I will, I'm not, I'm not fibbing here at all when I say that no image that I created with this with this helmet, uh, with this portrait rather, did it justice. In hand, it's legitimately as if Katie Sackhoff stepped out the screen into a box that you opened in your home. It's really, really yeah. solid. Now, it's some um, of the finest portrait work that I've seen that I've seen Hot Toys do. How are you how are you feeling about it, guy? I, you know, I, I am just having it because you had me do one pistol. I did want to show that they fit in there. There, I was. Oh, that's cool. I was just loving her kind of like oh, awesome. gunslinger because I did bring up the ninety degree uh, bend on her elbow to get that gunslinger look. I kind of well, wanted to let's see. Let's roll with that idea, guy. Let's roll with that idea. Just go ahead and put her relaxed hand on that right hand and leave that as a pose because we've seen her holding the helmet. We've seen images of her holding, and I even did it in the um, in the first look. Uh, but we've seen that image before, so there's reference for that. But that is a unique one that I have not seen yet. So I, I celebrate that. I think we should celebrate that and go ahead and do that as our final pose for the day. All right. Yeah, well, I am awesome. going to relax pose. Um, 
Because I like cool. that gunslinger look, one other thing about the articulation, I think Terry may have also gone up to this, when you take it out of the box, the arms are going to be slightly open to the side. They don't go tight against the body. I like that idea. I like that that's... She's never in a totally neutral stance. She's always Kinda ready to go. Kind of speaks to the character too, guys, so that's totally fine. She's yeah, always ready I to go. Um, let's see, Terry, I'm going to unscrew that stand. Place her on and there. And when you get her out there, now that you've got her out there and onto the stand, and uh, look how well she balances, by the way. Ah, oh, that, that railing. Yeah, go ahead and uh, I'm sure that you probably have some friends that you want to bring on the screen for her. I do. Um, I do. And some of these, Terry, I picked up yesterday at the buy one, get one. Oh, the BOGO. <laughs> yes. Uh, show slash yes. It, this is... This is your chance, folks, for those uh, who may be army building or have held off going, well, I don't know, do I get this character or not? You don't want to not do them. So I'm going to move Bo right up to the front and bring around some friends. That's that we really have cool here. to see our intern there bringing in. The, the yes, it's nice. We, uh, we here at Sideshow, uh, you know, definitely got to have our guys to help out. Yeah. I got this on the BOGO. Yeah, it's very crucial. Did you really? Yeah, he got that on BOGO. I uh, Did I pick up a dozen <laughs> figures yesterday? Yes, yes, I did. Um, oh, yes, maybe did. half of that. <laughs> yeah. All right. We get that. We definitely have a scene with these two here. Moff Gideon. Oh, wow. If you're a trooper yeah. builder, which Terry and I are, make sure to add this guy. It's really cool. Now, um... We talked about her unique helmet, Bo-Katan's, um, and the only other time I had kind of seen that unique helmet design mm -hmm. was with the armorer there. And uh, if we're going to go more into the story of Bo-Katan, we're going to have this guy, the Death yep. Watcher. The armorer's helmet actually always felt a little bit antiquated to me, almost like there was a ceremonial quality to it. Yeah. And, um, and so that just kind of, if that's the case, and that kind of speaks to the fact that Bo-Katan's helmets are kind of, uh, kind of painting an homage to a more classic historical look for the Mandalorians. Uh, you know, Ma Mando history is pretty darn neat. And uh, pick up this character, get yourself a microfiber cloth, but these dark troopers. <laughs> uh, if really I'm going to have Moff Gideon, I'm going to have to have a dark trooper. At least one guy. Got to, got to have at least one. At least one. Move on. Uh, there, uh, to, uh, to be in it. But. And there's your collection, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, that looks remarkably like the shelf in my living room. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm going to step out here so you can take a look. At options, options, options. Not, of, not uh, only of course Bo-Katan, but uh, I am excited to create my final scene. That goodbye scene. <laughs> Uh, at the end of and season two. Yeah, and so this gets me a little bit closer uh, to it. One step at a time, guy. One step One at a time. One step at a time, sir. One step mm -hmm. at a time. Yeah. Again, that's, that is the essence of Mandalorian collections right there. And I really, really dig the fact that you can actually, if, if you, if you're, collection is a little bit light right now on that this is the perfect opportunity to take advantage of that buy one get one or of yep. what people at sideshow are affectionately calling bogo, bogo. which yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm i'm bogo kind of on the fence about some of things myself yeah again That's because right. uh, while i while i do have most of the figures in fact i think all of the figures that we're seeing on screen right now except the uh except for the uh, death trooper dark trooper <laughs> so many troopers <laughs> but uh yeah I think it's it's very very tempting for me at this point to move on that and actually increase my collection just uh, just based on what is being offered up in the buy one get one scenario and it's not limited to just star wars there are oh, plenty no. of marvel offerings if that's your particular jam there's even some dc stuff i noticed that uh that batman and um and the bat pod are both on both, both on yep. buy one get one yeah hopefully yeah. you've seen and our show in which we put them together now, what you're seeing oh, Guy right. there doing right now with the makeup brush is essential. That, that To get one of those in your collection is very much essential for uh, keeping those things clean. Uh, you know, I think for all figures, but uh, definitely with uh, with your darks or, or any of the troopers. These guys here, these stormtroopers, I like the weathering, so if they get a little dirty, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's well, thanks so much, Guy, and thanks for actually showcasing what I consider to be a very the epitome of... Uh, of 
Hot Toys Mandalorian figure collecting right there. That's just that's just gorgeous. Once you get these things all together and build up that collection, they look remarkable, just like what you're seeing there. And of course, you can do whatever you want to with your own display. But yeah, I'm I'm really digging what we've done there in just a matter of 60 seconds or so. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for thanks for doing so such an awesome job on the posing. Thank you, Jesse, and uh, and everybody there at the thank studio. You guys. And uh, also thank you everybody at home for taking time out of your day to watch the show with us today. We'll be back next week for another episode. And until then, don't forget to let your geek side show.